Yo, what's going on, everybody? Lifu here. Welcome back to the No Style Podcast. This is episode six, and we're going to be talking about leadership, specifically how I developed my leadership skills. Um, I just want to let you guys know that I am in no way a perfect leader. I'm still working on it. I have a lot to learn, but this is just some of the things that I've learned along the way that I hope to share with you guys and hopefully you guys find some value in it. So before we get started, I just want to put a quick disclaimer out there that nothing said in this podcast is intended to be financial, legal, or fitness advice. Everything said in this podcast is intended for entertainment purposes only. Okay, file the way, let's get it. So I broke this down into three points. Um, Yeah. Let's get it. So I just want to say that I want to be talking a lot about basketball, specifically pickup basketball. And if you don't play basketball, that's okay. I'm going to make it very simple and you're going to be able to follow along. But basically, let's get started. What is leadership? So leadership is, well, you're leading people, right? But if you're going to lead people, but people have to, right? Follow your lead, right? They have to follow you, right? So generally you want to be competent, right? At what you do, right? The nobody, generally no one's going to really follow someone who is not good at what they do. So if we talk about basketball, pick up basketball in the park, I would say I'm a decent player, but my confidence level is much higher, right? than my actual skill level, right? Like maybe my confidence level is up here and my skill is actually here, right? But because of my confidence level, I play better than my actual skill. You get me? Like I'm like over here in the middle, right? So because I believe in myself, almost sometimes delusional confidence um, allows me to do that. And people generally like, they're like, wow, like, all right, he's willing to take the big shot. You know, he's willing to miss the game-winning shot. Um, he's willing to take that game-winning shot to win the game. And if he misses, it's his fault. But you know, he has the balls to take it, and he'll take it with confidence. You know, and people, you know, people gravitate just towards that. And every team, like say you're playing four and four pickup basketball, well, every team needs someone to revolve around, right? Like it's not everybody does the same thing in equal amount of time. There's different roles. And someone has to lead. So what is leadership, right? Like we we always put, like throw this word out there. He's a good leader. He's a great leader. Wow, what great leadership or what poor leadership, this, that, and the third. But this is how I develop my leadership, right? Because being a leader is tough, right? If, if you play basketball, right, and you're leading, it's your strategy, it's your matchups, right? You decide which players on your team will guard the opposing team's players. And then maybe the matchups don't work out, right? Like it doesn't play out the way it should and you lose the game because of it. Well, I take the blame, right? It's my fault. But if it works out, it's a team effort, right? So, yeah. So... How did I develop this leadership? Well, I would say I will give a lot of this credit to playing the game of basketball, right? Like in basketball, you're in a team of four, sometimes five, and you all have to play together because there's only one ball. There's eight players on the four on four. There's 10 players on a five on five. There's only one ball. You have to work together when you have the ball on offense and also when you're trying to uh, prevent the opposing team from scoring on defense. So you have to play as a team. And obviously when you have um, a lot of people, sometimes people you never met before and you're playing, like we call it randoms. And uh, when you play with someone you never played with before and you know, you know everybody's personality is different. Everybody's um, play style is different, right? Like my idea of a high percentage shot might be different from someone else's idea of a high percentage shot, right? My idea of an open shot is different from someone else's idea of open shot, right? Like my defensive strategy might be different, right? And I might be wrong, like like I'm wrong a lot too, you know? But I think one of the things that makes a good leader is 
when you're wrong, you admit it, you know, like you take the blame, you know, don't deflect it, take the blame. And I feel like people respect you more because of it, right? Like it's okay to make mistakes. It's okay to mess up, you know, learn from it, but take the blame and we're going to get better. So one of the things that I think um, a good leader should possess is being able to have those difficult and awkward conversations. So I'll give you an example, right? In basketball, uh, this happened to me a few times. <laughs> and I've had this conversation about three times now. It's one of the most difficult conversations you can have in pickup basketball. So I was a captain of my team. I called next on the court, which means after the game is done, my team will be play the winner of the game before us. So originally, uh, I picked up this guy a random I never met him before and uh you know he looks solid you know like I mean just judging based on appearance you know it's not everything but you know he looks solid you know and I picked up my friend and my other friend and um unfortunately I didn't console with my friends to in, in regards to the skill level of that random I picked up and according to my friend that player is not his skill level is just not at the level that we need on our team to compete in order to win. And Bowdy picked him up. He was waiting on the bench for next. You know, he's been waiting for 15 minutes. I told him, I gave him my word. But what do I do, right? Do I pick him up and almost certainly lose because of that weak link, right? Like, you're only as strong as your weakest link. Like, if you listen to the podcast, you can't hear, but I'm wearing a necklace right now from Sanjeev. But this necklace is only as strong as its weakest link. Once once these links break, the whole necklace falls apart. So because of that weak link, we were almost sure to lose a very competitive um, basketball that day. And I had to make the tough decision to tell him, hey, I'm sorry, I cannot pick you up on my team anymore. Um, like, I'm, j- I'm going to drop you off my team, right? Like, but I had to, it's a very awkward conversation because he, it's like, he's like, man, like, I wanted to play, right? Like, obviously, he's like, oh, he doesn't think I'm good enough to play, which is true because that's the reason I'm dropping him. But, like, how can you um, convey that message to someone and not leave a bad taste in their mouth, right? Not have any conflict or beef, right? Like, obviously, it's going to be awkward. No one's going to leave happy. Like, you know, he's not going to be happy, but, you know, try to resolve it in the best way possible. And I was like, hey, man, like, you know, I'm always the one to say this because it's, you know, it's tough, right? Some, a lot of us would rather just get on the court and be like, oh, you didn't get picked up, bro. You got next, you know? But um, I try to just have a conversation, right? Like, I don't want to make anyone feel bad because we all come to the park just to have fun and play some basketball. And we want to get on the court. So I was telling the guy, I was like, hey, man, like, um, he said he doesn't really like to play physical because he's afraid of getting injured. So it was a physical game that day. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, I kind of just parlayed into that. I don't even know what the parlay means. <laughs> I kind of just went into that. I was like, hey, man, it's going to be a physical game. And I know you don't want to get injured in physical. Um, you know, like we do need a shooter, you know, a guy who can hit a jump shot. And uh, I heard you're more of a mid-range shooter. We need a three-point shooter. I was just making stuff up, right? But Ultimately, I dropped them off my team, and um, I don't think there was beef um, or conflict as a result, but it was definitely a very tough conversation. But I think a key thing to leadership is just being able to communicate, right? Communicating is not only one way. Communicating is both ways. It's a two-way street, right? I'm talking to you, right? And then I'm also listening to what you have to say, right? And resolve it. We're working together. So, yeah, I mean, having just having the tough conversations is always hard. You know, it's never easy, but you, you get better. And over time, you know, um, you're going to have to deal with the t- t- difficult situations as a leader. So, like I said before, um, in basketball, a lot of times you're not going to have the perfect matchup, right? Sometimes you're going to have mismatches. And you're going to have to hide some of your teammates on other players, right? Or have, like, different strategies to be able to have a chance to win, right? And oftentimes, that means trying new things that might not work. But you have to be, like, I'm confident enough, right? I'm assertive enough where, like, 
yo, let's try it, right? Let's try it, right? But I'm also willing to take the blame if it messes up, you know, like of the loss. And when you try new things, it's not always gonna work, right? If if I try something new in the basketball court and it works every time, I'll be the greatest coach in NBA history, <laughs> you know? But I'm not, you know, like, I just go off what I know and sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But just know that if it works, the strategy, the new strategy works, it's a team effort, right? You celebrate together. But if you lose, the blame is put on the leader, you know? Like, like I take the blame myself. It's not like other people are putting blame on me. But I take the blame because it was my idea, right? And they followed through, right? So just being able to take fault, take the blame. Um, and last but not least, just being assertive and communicating, right? Like just, right? Like saying, say, in New York, they say saying, saying something with your chest, you know, say like you mean it. Don't, don't like, you don't want to say something, hands up, say you're, I always go back to dating, but like, say you're, you met a cute girl in your college class and you want to ask her out to get a coffee, right? You don't want to be like, hey, so-and-so, um, would you like to get coffee sometime if you're not too busy today? It's okay if you say no, um, it's all good, ha, 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 LOL, right? You don't want to say that, right? Because that's not confident, it's not assertive, right? You're like, do you want coffee, but only if, uh, you know what I mean? So be confident, but hey, would you like to grab coffee at 4 p.m. before class, you know? Just put it out there. And whatever happens, happens, you know. That's how I do things, at least. Um, what else? And also, like, in any team, right? Like, when you guys do class projects or you work in a professional setting, right? Someone has to lead, right? Someone has to take the charge, right? Like, just like birds, they migrate, right? There's a leader, right? It switches up, but there's always a leader, right? Not if there's... If everybody's just following each other, it's a, it's a circle, right? You're not going to go anywhere, right? You're just like this, right? So th that's how I see it. But um, also, just kind of being the mediator, right? Um, I'm just hearing both sides, you know, understanding both sides and just calming people down, right? Sometimes I play basketball and things get physical, things get heated, you know? And a lot of times, you know, what we're all here just bonded by the love of, the game of basketball. And a lot of times I pull people apart, right? I'm like, hey, calm down, man. Calm down, all right? Like, I don't, don't, don't get in each other's face. You know, you get in each other's face, chest to chest, start arguing, right? Like, emotions get in the way and, you know, I don't want any you know, altercations or anything, right? So I just pull them away. I'm like, hey, man, chill, right? Because they're not going to hit me because um, I'm just pulling them away, right? But sometimes, you know, you want to, uh, people have that pride, right? That they're, you know, they, they're very proud, you know, and like, oh, you can't disrespect me like that, you know, and do that, right? But the way I see it is a win-win because I get to pull them away. So no f confrontation happens, but also they get to keep their pride, right? And sometimes as a leader, you want to think what's best for everybody um, instead of yourself, right? Kind of be selfless in a way. Oh, uh, but yeah, I mean like how did I develop my leadership? Um, I'll tell a quick story. So I played uh, basketball in this church league when I was in fifth grade. And my coach always said, there's nothing better than winning, right? And I think I had that before that, but like it kind of got ingrained in me and I always wanted to win, right? In basketball and life, like, look, I play basketball four on four and the other team has three great defenders. And they put the, the the skinny, like eighth grader on me, right, to guard me. I don't know why. I guess they want him to see, like, you know, what the competition is about. I'm trying to win. I'm not going easy on you. I'm gonna post you up. I'm gonna get a bucket, right? Like, I'm gonna get the highest percentage shot I can to get my chance to win. And I always wanted to win in basketball in life. And sometimes, like, you gotta take control. Like, I, for me, like, I just like be assertive, right? like control what you can control but don't I don't I don't like to leave up the chance you know like you know because people people can't read your mind you know like I can't read nobody's mind right I can try to look at your face see your emotions and stuff but I can't read your mind right that's why it's really important that we communicate I feel like in this era of social media 
We all have smartphones so powerful in our pocket that's more powerful than a laptop like 10 years ago. Um, but we don't really communicate, right? Like, um, we don't, right? We don't, we don't communicate well, right? We like, we, we leave things up to chance, you know, like we don't follow up if we're unsure. And I think it's just important to get things right. You know, like even if you go out to dinner with friends, right? Like I'm usually the one who, um, makes the plan, right? Like, Hey guys, let's get Italian food. Right. Okay. Who should we invite? Right. Okay. Maybe these people. Okay. What time? What day? Right. And as the one organizing, I have to be assertive, right? I'm like, all right, like, <laughs> will you be down for talent food? Okay. You're down. You're down for now. Okay. Everybody's down for talent food. Okay. 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 Will you down, be down to go to this restaurant? Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. What time? Right. Right. And then also I have to think about all the little stuff that can go wrong. Right. Like for instance, I went to little Italy um, a few weeks ago on a Friday and they had the feast, right? This fair that stretched for like 10, 12 blocks and it was so packed. And a few of my friends drove and I didn't anticipate that um, you're not gonna find parking. It's tough to find parking in Manhattan, but if 10 blocks are closed off for a fair, you're not gonna find parking, very difficult. So, you know, I didn't anticipate that, right? But I have to think of that more, right? So the next time I'm gonna think of that, right? Also, right, well, if you go to a packed restaurant and have to wait an hour and a half to get a table, that's not good, right? You, you meet up at 8.30, you get in at 10, right? They're about to close up, you know, they're, about, they're mopping the floors, right? Um, <laughs> as you're eating, like, right? You want you I want to make a reservation, right? Um, okay, so reservation, what time, right? Like, like some people generally are more or less on time, right? Some people tend to run late and whatnot right so you gotta account for all that like you're not blaming nobody but you want to take that all into account so you can make um it good for everybody right like just accommodate everybody because when you're meeting up with friends guys right like we're all doing it for free right like i'm meeting up with my friends i'm spending my, like they're not paying me to meet up right i'm meeting up for like meeting up taking time out of day energy um to meet up share a meal and um break bread have some great conversation but, you know, it's all on our free will, right? Like, we're not doing it because we're getting paid. We're not doing it, you know, we're just just, just for genuine love. And can't take that for granted, you know? Guys, one thing I want to tell you guys is just be genuine, be compassionate. And that, that's why I think a lot of good things have happened to me. Just being, you know, a genuine person, kind. You know, sometimes at restaurants, right? Like, sometimes the service isn't good, right? And there's a million things that's gonna happen, right? Like I was at an Italian restaurant and the food was subpar, right? Um, it wasn't good, but I think that day was so packed that they probably didn't have enough cooks to cook um, all the food, right? And they probably had someone who's, it was Italian food, probably didn't have had a cook that wasn't experienced enough to make a certain dish, right? But they're like, hey, all right, it's so packed anyways, we have to get the food out. Here's the recipe, just go do it. And obviously, right, like the nuances are there. And if you ha don't have a lot of experience doing it, it's not gonna come out amazing. And the food, you know, but um, I'm still gonna like give the tip to the waiters, right, whatever. Cause at the end of the day, um, I, I firmly believe they're trying their best and you know, stuff happens. And honestly, like, right, I might not go back to that restaurant again, but sometimes it's just about just building those relationships because you never know, right? Like who are you gonna um, run into again in business life? Why are we gonna um, like create a, a bad start to relationship, a, a potential relationship down the road just over a few dollars, right? Over like, you know, a subpar food. But that's just the way I see it, guys. Um, just, you know, it's tough. You know, it's tough, um, but I think um, you might be wondering, right? Like, is leadership, are you born with leadership? Are you, uh, can you develop it? I should write a book about it. Um, I think the, the principle, the five principles of developing leadership and you can definitely develop it. Um, there's levels to it. Um, I don't want to get into the book too much. I just want to give you guys concrete examples. But 
I think you can definitely develop it if you want to. Um, and sometimes, like, like you're put in situations where you have to develop that leadership, right? You have to speak up, right, um, for the greater good. So, yeah, that's about it. Um, this is the sixth podcast episode of the No Style Podcast. Hope you guys enjoyed. We're upping the quality, you know, using the uh, the back camera of my iPhone 13. So this will be up on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Music. Uh, make sure to give me a, a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts and Spotify if you enjoyed. And if you watch on YouTube, I hope you guys had a fun time hanging with me. And until next time, I'm Lee Fu, and I'm out. Peace.